Okay, Algebra 1, Chapter 2, Test Review. Question number one. What does the word sum mean? S-U-M. Answer to an addition problem. Okay, so if I'm looking at sum of twice a number, how do I write twice a number? 2N. Okay, so we have a lot of, um, a lot of people that are wanting to write it as N2 instead of 2N. Just a reminder that the number always comes first. Okay, so we're going to do the sum of twice a number and 8. So what do I put after the 2N? Plus 8. Okay, now, keyword here is at most. What does at most mean? Has to be less than or equal to. So we end up with 2N plus 8 is less than or equal to. to I went the wrong way. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, 2N plus 8 less than or equal to 25. Okay, question number two. The temperature is at least 75 degrees. Okay, so no adding, no multiplying, no anything else. It's just T is what? Greater than or equal to 75. Okay, again, that's one of those that should take you all of about two to five seconds to get that one, right? Question number three. Cost of a ticket, T, will be no more than $26. What does no more than mean? Less than or equal to 26. Okay. So we should be able to, to get through one, two, and three, or however many of those there are tomorrow. There will be some of those types of problems as well. Okay, question number four. What do you see right away? Question number four. Open circle. And it's going to the right. So I know that means what? It means less than. Less than. To the right. How about greater than? All right. So greater than. And what's it? what number is it above? Two. And we can use any variable. Doesn't matter. So number four is X is greater than two. Number five. What kind of circle do we see? Closed circle, so, and it's going arrow to the left. So that's going to be less than or equal to, and what's the number? Three. Okay, anybody have any questions so far? These are pretty basic. I don't think we have too many issues with those. Okay, so let's actually get to solving them. Let's look at number six. What should we do first on number six? Uh, flip, the entire equation. flip the entire equation. Okay, get the m on the other side to start out with. So this should be m minus six is greater than negative nine. And my one and only step in this problem is adding six to both sides. So we end up with m is greater than negative three. Okay, now they ask us to graph this solution. Again, don't make too crazy of a number line. The number lines will be given to you on the test just like they are on the review. Um, in this case, I'm going with 0, with 3, with negative 3. And what's that going to look like? Jack, what's it going to look like? Open circle above the negative 3, arrow to the, to the right. Now, 7 yesterday caused a little bit of confusion for some because we have that rule that if things are the exact same thing, that we cancel them. So sometimes we just see the 3z and we don't see the signs out in front of them. Okay, These two are both different. There's a difference between negative 3z and positive 3z. We want our letters on which side? the left side. So what am I going to do with that positive 3z? Subtract it. Okay, now, don't let your math let you down. What's negative 3z minus 3z? 
negative 6z. It's actually negative 6z. Because negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Okay, put it in a calculator if you don't believe me. And now we're going to divide both sides by what? Negative 6 and flip the inequality sign. So we end up with z is less than or equal to negative 1. And if I put that on a graph real quick. What's going to be above the negative one? A closed circle and an arrow to the left. Okay, how many people feel really confident right now? Okay, these, this is the groundwork. As much as this seems easy, this is the foundation for what's coming for the multi-step stuff. All right, as long as the foundation is good, we should be in good shape. So let's move on to the actual equations. Number eight. Again, from 8 to 13, these are just solving, so we don't have to graph them. Do I have a variable on the left? Yes, yes so let's keep it there. How do I move the 5m over to that variable? Subtract it. So we're going to subtract 5m from both sides. What is 1m minus 5m? Negative 4m. Some of us really need to use that calculator tomorrow. Okay, take a couple seconds, plug it in there. Let's get that right, guarantee. Divide both sides by negative 4 and flip the inequality sign. What is negative 4 divided by negative 4? Positive 1. So m is less than or equal to positive 1. Now, on number 9... I'm going to do a different technique than I showed some of you yesterday. We have a fear of fractions. We can't get over it. So I'm going to embrace it, and I'm just going to find a way to not have a fraction in that problem. Okay? How could I get rid of that x over negative 4? Multiply everything by 4. Everything. Everything. So what's x over 4 times 4? Just x. 6 times 4? 24. x times 4? 4x. 8 times 4? 32. I promise you, if I put that question for number 9, instead of the x over 4 part of it, I would get a lot less questions. Why? Because the fraction's eliminated. Now I've got variables on both sides. I just start working it. Okay, again, I've got something on the left. So even though the 4x is bigger, I'm going to keep everything on the left. How do I get the 4x to the left side? Subtract it. And what's 1x minus 4x? Negative 3x plus 24. And then over on the other side, all I have left is that 32. Okay, what do I do now? Subtract the 24. For those of you who I showed the other method yesterday, you'll see that your answer is exactly the same. They both work. In this method, I just get rid of the fraction quicker. So that leaves me negative 3x is less than or equal to 8. And I've got two more things I have to do. What do I do? Divide by negative 3 and flip the sign. Now, I still get too many kids coming up to me saying, Mr. No, my answer is 2.1666666 repeating. No, it's not. Your answer is 8 over negative 3. Stop there. Leave it a fraction. Move on. Okay. All right, now, number 10. There's our friend, the fraction, again.
Let's go ahead and do the distributed property on the right hand side just to save time a little bit. What's one half times H? One half H. And one half times eight? Positive four. Now this one's a little different. I don't have to eliminate the fraction on this one because they eliminate themselves. I have the exact same thing on both sides. I have one half H and one half H. So I can just cancel these. And I'm left with 2 is greater than or equal to 4. Is that true? No. It is not true. So what is my answer? No solution. Perfect. <coughs> Number 11. What's out in front of the parentheses? Negative a negative what? One. One. Okay, so I'm going to do this because a lot of us wanted to do distributive property anyways, but we kind of took that 4K and did distributive property, but it's not the 4K that's in front of the parentheses. It's a negative one. Okay, so really we do have distributive property here. Okay, so we have negative 1 times 3 which is what negative, negative 3 and negative 1 times positive 3k is negative 3k and so that's all we do we can look at that as the negative sign outside of the parentheses just changes the sign as everything of everything in the middle okay or we can actually do the distributed property because that's what we're most familiar with now i can combine some like terms what can i put together 4k minus 3k is what? K. Okay. So I have k minus 3 is greater than 2. And the final step is what? Adding 3 to both sides. So k is greater than 5. Number 12. Number 12, a little bit different than some of the others. What do you see first? Some like terms on the right-hand side. 6n minus 2n is what? 4n. So I have 4n plus 3 is less than 4n plus 8 once I've combined those like terms. What can I do with the 4n's? They can cancel. Okay, now I have a value of 3 is less than 8 and that's actually true 3 is less than 8 so what is my answer all real numbers Okay, first step on question 13, distributed property. So I've got 10 minus 6x. Here's a biggie yesterday that some of us missed. Make sure it's negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2. Before we do any combining on both sides, are there any like terms we can combine that are on the same side? The 10 and the, the 10 and the 2. So I've got 10 plus 2 gives me 12 minus 6x. Now right here, some of us might be thinking, well, there's a 6x, there's a 6x. I should cancel those, but they're not the same. One of them is negative, one of them is positive. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I want everything on my left-hand side, is I'm going to go ahead and subtract this one. 
just so it will remain on the left side. And that gives me 12 minus 12x is greater than 10. And what would be my next step? Subtract the 12. So that gives us negative 12x is greater than negative 2. And two more steps. What are they? Divide by negative 12 and flip the sign. A lot of stuff going on here. What is negative 2 divided by negative 12? Positive 1 sixth. Again, it's just a reduction or a simplification of the fraction. Yes, sir. Well, in that case, you wouldn't. But if you got an improper fraction, it doesn't matter to me, as long as it stays in fraction form. All right. Yes. You could. Yep, and then you're going to have to flip it later. So either way, you're going to have to flip it. So that's fine. Okay, number 14. Number 14, a lot of stuff going on here. So we've got two different equations. And we need to graph their results. First one, what do we do? Divide by negative 3 and flip the sign. Again, tomorrow, the very first thing I would put at the top of my paper, even before I put my name on it, is when you multiply or divide by a negative number, remember to flip the inequality sign. Something to that effect. Okay, second one, what's the first step? Add 6. So that gives me 2y is greater than 8. And final step, divide by 2. Do I flip the sign there? I do not because that's the positive value. Okay. Now it also wants us to graph these. It's an or, so it's typically going to do what? Go opposite ways. Okay, so let's see if it does that. So I've got. Now, here's where labeling gets a little bit different. Again, I'm okay with just the two numbers. So over here, we're at negative 3. Over here, we're a little bit further at 4. What's above the negative 3? Open, Open circle, arrow to the left. And above the 4? Open, Open circle, arrow to the right. Okay, that's a two-part question tomorrow. If you miss the first two... Obviously, your graph is going to be wrong as well, so that would be two checks. So let's focus and make sure we get the first one correct. Number 15. Number 15, I'm going to go ahead and break those into the two equations. They should be negative 1 is less than c plus 2. And the second one is c plus 2 is less than 3. I'm going to rearrange the first one to have the C plus 2 on the left side. And then I'm going to solve it. What's my only step? Subtract, Subtract 2. That's a negative 2. Do I flip the sign? No. no, because it only works for multiplication and division. What's negative 1 minus 2? Negative 3. And then when I subtract 2 on the other one, I'm going to get C is less than 1. By the way it's written, is this an and or an or? And. It's an and because it's mushed together, right? So they should meet in the middle. Let's see what happens. I've got a negative 3 and I've got a positive 1. Above the negative 3, what do I have? 
open circle, arrow to the to the right, and I have above the one, open circle, arrow to the left. So they do meet in the middle. All right. Number 16. Go ahead and take a second and solve those on your own without me. And then we'll get back to it in just a second. <laughs> okay, first equation, what do we do? Subtract one. And then divide by two. A is less than five. Do you guys feel like everything's just like repeating itself over and over again? Okay, good. We should get to that point. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay, I've got an A on the left side already. Okay, so I'm going to move the 3A just so I can keep everything on the left side. I know in the last few of these, some of you are thinking, well, Mr. Renault, you taught us to move the smallest one over to the biggest one. That's not necessarily a rule. That's just a suggestion. Okay, you don't have to do that. I want to keep A's on the left, so I'm going to move the 3A by doing what? Subtracting it. And what's 1a minus 3a? Negative 2a. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 and flip the sign. So that gives me a is greater than 6. And this was an or. So both of those will be valid. Number 17. 17, I'm going to break up the equations again just to save a little bit of time. This is going to be 32 is greater than 16 minus 4G. And then 16 minus 4G is greater than 12. I feel like a broken record as well because I keep just saying over and over again, hey guys, what's the first step? Well, that's what it's going to be like tomorrow when you take it. And then when you score 100% and you go home and your parents want to just throw money at you, you'll be like, all right, it's a good day. All right, I was good at that first step. So I'm going to move this around. I'm going to put my 16 minus 4G. For all you parents listening at home, if your kids make hundreds, you should throw lots of money at them. I'm just saying. And Mr. Renault always gets 10% because the house always wins. All right, so now I change it to 16 minus 4G is less than 32. Shh. Again, I just did that so I could have my G on the left-hand side. So what do I do with the 16? Subtract the 16. So now I have negative 4G is less than positive 16. And the final two steps are going to be? Divide by negative 4 and flip the inequality sign. So I get G is greater than negative 4. Same thing. Subtract 16. So now I have negative 4G is, oop, I don't switch it yet. i got to step ahead. Is greater than negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. Switch the sign. And G is less than or equal to, excuse me, less than 1. Now, this is an and. Is it possible to have a number that's greater than negative 4 and less than 1? Yes. yes. So both of those answers are valid.
Number 18, a lot of you yesterday did two equations for number 18. You started off with two equations. Number 18 says the absolute value of 2x minus 6 is less than 0. What type of numbers are less than 0? Negative. negative numbers. Okay? You cannot have an absolute value that's a negative number. So this is a no solution problem. Number 19. I know you guys are getting excited. We're getting really close to the word problems. Yes. This is a dangerous question. The danger in this question lies in the negative 8 and the negative 3. You can look at this question and you can say, oh, that says greater than or equal to negative 3. Well, all absolute values are greater than or equal to negative 3 because they're all positive. However, we have to take care of the negative 8 first. We have to move it to the other side by doing what? Adding it. So now that changes everything because now my equation is 7 minus 2y is greater than or equal to 5. And that's not all real numbers, because not all answers are greater than or equal to 5. They could be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay, So this is the part where I break this into two different equations. Taking away the absolute value brackets, 7 minus 2y is greater than 5, or greater than or equal to 5. And then my second equation is going to be 7 minus 2y. I flip the sign and make it a negative 5. Why do I flip the sign in the second one? Marshall. Because I went from a 5 to a negative 5. And mathematically, the only way I do that is multiplying by negative 1. OK, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. And I get negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 2. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 and flip the sign. And y is less than or equal to 1. Second one, same step. Subtract 7. I get negative 2y is less than or equal to negative 12. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. Whoop. And y is greater than or equal to 6. Can a number be less than 1 or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 6? Hmm. But this is absolute value, right? This is absolute value. So this isn't an and. It can be one or the other, remember, because we can have two answers in an absolute value. So be very careful. Absolute values are not ands. They are ors. They can be either one. All right. We're going to jump to the back page. We're going to jump to my favorite two questions on the review. And there are two of them on the test tomorrow. So... We graph the right answers. We want you to tell us and graph what the wrong answers are. Okay? So if I look at number 20, and I'm just going to graph the wrong ones. I'm not going to put both of them up here. Our numbers are negative 2 and 3. If the correct answer includes negative 2, does the incorrect answer include negative 2? Yes. It does not. So what should the circle above negative 2 be? Open. Open. And since the answer is pinched in, 
the not answer is going to go which direction? Outwards. Outwards. So above the three, what should I have? A closed circle. And an arrow to the? Right. To the right. Now, some of you might have missed this part on the review. In the directions, it says write them and graph them. So if you put it on the graph, that's the first part. But over in the space to the right, you should also have x is less than negative 2. And you should have x is greater than or equal to 3. You need to have both the graph and the actual writing. How many of you didn't do the actual writing? How many of you will do the actual writing tomorrow on the test? Absolutely. That's why we go through this stuff. All right, 21. I'm going from negative 1 to 1. Okay, what's going to be above negative 1? Closed circle. What's going to be above 1? Closed circle. And which way am I going? Pinched together. Now, it's pinched together. What does that look like when we write it? Okay, but what does it look like? They're all... So, we start with a negative 1 here. We start with a 1 here. X is in the middle. Now I need to get the signs correct. Okay? Absolutely. Yep. Has to be written this way. Remember, X is less than or equal to 1. And because we're reading to the left, X is greater than or equal to negative 1. Ah, uh, now the fun part. Yay! Okay. If I can give you any advice to keep you from giving up on the word problems is to understand that all of these word problems, 22 through 25, need to look like something like number one. Okay? You just need to write them out to look like that. You're going to have a greater than, less than, whatever on one side, and you're going to have some variable stuff on the other side. Okay? So let's look at the first one. I would also advise you to go through and with your with a highlighter, if you're a highlighter person, or your pencil, circle the numbers. These are the numbers that are going to appear in my problem. Here's the variable that's going to appear in my problem. Okay? Notice that in number 22 it says words W. All right? So your equation is going to have the letter W in it. Well, Mr. No, what if I put an X? Don't. Put a W. What's the total amount of words? At least 500. So what does that mean? Greater than or equal to 500. So I know it's going to be greater than or equal to 500. How many words do you have left to write? How many do you have left to write? How many do you have left to write? W. How many have you already written? 285. So what I have left to write plus what I have written should be greater than or equal to 500. That's a check mark right there. It's all you got to do is write the equation. Second check mark, got to solve it. Piece of cake. What do we do? Subtract 285. And so we end up with the amount of words we need to write is going to be greater than or equal to 215. Okay, star, star for the answer and for the equation. Number 23. 
I see at least 30. So I know that's going to be my number on the right-hand side. What does at least 30 mean? Could be greater than or equal to 30. At least means I could have over. Okay. How many bags do we have? B. Okay. Say it says bags B. How many cubic feet are in each bag? 2.5. So if I have the amount of cubic feet in my bags and my value of bags, do I add, subtract, or multiply, or divide to get the total weight? You multiply. So that's going to be 2.5. B is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, star number one. Now, how do I solve it? Divide both sides by 2.5 or 2.5. So the amount of bags is going to be greater than or equal to how many? 12. Mr. Renault, it's always so much easier when you do the problems with us. But you won't be able to do them with us on the test tomorrow. That is correct. All right? Ask yourself the same questions. What's my number going to be out to the right? What's my variable? Do I add, subtract, multiply, divide? Okay? Next one talks about profit. I don't think there's anybody in this room that would say, you know what, I can't wait to get out of high school so I can sit at home and make zero dollars and just waste away and not do anything in life. Okay? We've all got different situations. Some of us might go to college. Some of us might go to a trade school. Some of us might go right to work. Some of us might win, the, their parents might win the lottery and you live in the lap of luxury for the rest of your life. I don't know. Okay? But we all need to understand what profit is. Okay? If I'm going to profit at least $500 for this party or this event, what does at least $500 profit mean? I want to go greater than or equal to. So I want to make at least that. If I'm buying something that's going to take away from my profit, am I adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? I'm subtracting. What have I already bought? I bought some equipment, right? And it cost me how much? 180. 180. So I'm subtracting 180. Okay? And do I know how much or how many tickets I'm making or selling? So that's going to be, did they say T? Yeah. Yes. Do I know how much they cost? $4. If you're buying 10 tickets and they're $4 a piece, do you add, subtract, multiply, or divide? multiply. So that's going to be 4t. Now, some of you will put 4.00t. It's the same thing. doesn't make any difference. All right. So that's star number one. To solve it, I'm going to add 180. And I get 4t is greater than or equal to 680. Okay, so right now, that's what I want to make. Those are my expenses. I need to sell enough tickets to cover that. So how do I solve this? Divide by 4. And what do we got? 100, 170. I need to sell greater than or equal to 170 tickets if I'm going to make 500 bucks. And that would be second parts last one you want to purchase a calculator oh who doesn't I mean yeah probably over fall break y'all are going to go out and buy some new calculators for at most a hundred fifteen dollars at most means Less than or equal to. That's all you want to spend. You don't want to go over $115. You have saved $30 so far. And you earn $750 an hour at your job. Hours represented by H. How do I figure your $750 an hour? H times the 7.5. 
okay? And you've already earned $30, or you've already saved $30. Oh, I didn't have my H there, sorry. That looks clustered. So there's my initial equation. There's my first gold star. What's my first step? Subtract 30. What this tells you logically is, hey, I've already got 30 saved. So I need to work 750 an hour for so many hours to earn how much money? $85. Divide both sides by 7.5. Somebody got that value. I don't know what that is. What do you got? Give me the actual. It since it is decimals. Give me the actual decimal. Somebody give it to me in decimals. So 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 you need to work at least eleven and one third hours. All right, that's the chapter two test review.